Let's join Tandi Maseku from CTC as she shows us the wiring of the power circuit for the forward or reverse single phase starter. I'm just going to give a brief breakdown of what we have in front of us. In front of us, we've got what we call a power circuit, which we use to control the motor. So now we've got a contactor that is going to be used for forward and a contactor that's going to be used for reverse. We have wired in cables that are going into the motor. Remember all the time, we need to connect between the motor and the contactors for us to be able to have continuity. So we've got a, a connection that comes from the running winding, which is where we're doing the reversal of the direction. So we're coming in from the motor and then what we're doing then is bridging from the forward contactor into the reverse contactor. And if you can maybe just have a look, the fact is that we are swapping a live and a neutral on each side so that we affect the direction of the motor. I'm going to demonstrate how that gets done. Um, Bear in mind that the color coding is not correct. What I should be having here is a black conductor because for neutral we can use black when we do hard wiring. We only use blue when we are using a flexible cable as in this case currently. Let's take a detailed look at how this power circuit is wired. To start with, we have Live connected to L1 of the forward contactor. This is bridged to L2 of the forward contactor and L1 of the reverse contactor. Next, neutral is connected to L3 of the forward contactor and bridged to L3 of the reverse contactor. T1 of the forward and reverse contactors are bridged and connected to the centrifugal switch of the motor. T2 of the forward contactor is bridged to T3 of the reverse contactor and then both of these are connected to the start of the run winding. T3 of the forward contactor is bridged to T2 of the reverse contactor and then both of these are connected to the end of the run winding. It is this switch over between T2 and T3 of the contactors that switches the direction of the run windings and hence the motor's direction. Finally, the end of the start winding is connected back to L3 of the forward and reverse contactors. Now let's go back to Tandi as she demonstrates how this main or power circuit works. So I'm going to put the power in and what I'm going to do is not allowed to be done in terms of running the contactors because the sooner we push the contactor in, we enable power between the inside, the, the, the supply side and the load. Now with my hand in this vicinity, if you do that, there's a chance that you can get electrocution. So what I'm going to do is not allowed. But for the sake of the demonstration right now, I will do that in order to show the connection that is in here and the effect it has on the motor. So right, if you recall, initially when we had the power plugged in, we would have had motion on the motor. And as you can see, there's nothing because control now has been given over to the two contactors. So I'm going to push the first contactor in, which is a forward contactor, and note the direction of the motor. So we have got motion on the motor in a um, clockwise direction from where I am standing. And I'm then going to push in the reverse contactor which is now turning in an anti-clockwise direction, showing that the direction on my motor is changing using the effect of the contactors. But now, remember what I said, you're not supposed to bring the contactors in, bringing your hand here. We can make use 
of a stop and a start station which is what we have over here now auxiliaries in electricity works a lot they almost basically become the heart of what we do as electricians now we have got a normally open auxiliary it does exactly the same as a normally open auxiliary over here but what i'm doing here is going to be using the start button to close the normally open that will enable power to the coil which will then allow direction or motion of the one contactor 